Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Barney, I may follow up on what Ms. Spear was asking about this multi-generational service seems to be rooted to some degree in the values that are observed and appreciated from military members. And I, I note in the letter from commissioners, uh, you guys take on challenging issues and, and you wrote, we heard from passionate advocates on both sides of complex and controversial topics, such as expanding registration for the selective service to all Americans, and deliberated those matters with civility and respect. How should we think about the importance of civility and respect as ways to recruit people into a wonderful value-based system like the United States military? Well, Congressman, one of the things that we heard when we met with people who had served, had served in our armed forces, including those folks who came from a generation where the draft was in effect, and many people who did not want to serve had their first opportunity to serve alongside people who were different from them, from different parts of the nation, and to do something together in a way that was totally outside their experience. The experience of service does that, sir. And we, we believe that by providing more opportunities for people to learn about service, we can, we can open up opportunities for, for all Americans. Well, one thing I might say is that when we talk to family members of, of young people who are planning their future, and we talk about things like military service, we sometimes heard, well, I, I really don't see my son or daughter being a, a trigger puller in the military. We need to do a better job as a nation in informing people of the broad opportunities that exist within our country to, to serve. And well, that me, every, every, I'm sorry, every population, every, every occupation in our nation is represented in some way in our military services. I don't want to be disrespectful by cutting you off on a question about civility and respect. We are limited in, in time though, but I totally agree with that statement. I think that it embodies what inspires so many people to service and it is why I am so deeply troubled at what I am currently seeing from the Biden administration and the Pentagon. Bishop Garrison is currently a senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense, and he tweeted, calls for civility rather than shouting down falsehoods and misinformation shall be the death of this nation, hashtag impeachment trial. And then I think to myself, well, gosh, I hope nobody's taking the advice of this senior advisor because we should be embracing civility, not saying that it could be the death of the nation. And then I see what's happening to people who serve, particularly Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Lohmeyer, who was relieved of his squadron command because he presented scholarship on Marxism and critique of critical race theory, which is an ideology that trains our service members to hate one another based on identity. And, and then I think to myself, well, you know, maybe it's just that Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer was relieved of his command because he was being overly political, using the military to make a political point. And gosh, then I thought about the last Lieutenant Colonel that we seem to give a lot of attention to here, and it was Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, who precisely used his role in the military uh, to be able to advance a political impeachment. So uh, I think that in my discussions with uh, commanding officers in my state, in my community, there is a real problem with the morale of a lot of our service members who believe that now under this like Bishop Garrison world where there's no nuance to perceive Trump supporters as anything but a threat to national security and civility has to be rejected, that that really does impact how these people view their service. And if they feel targeted, if they feel like you know, they forwarded the wrong joke, liked the wrong meme, sent the wrong tweet, that somehow their career will be over, that is going to impact our recruiting as much as any of the issues that we're discussing today. And maybe we wouldn't be in a position meeting, you know, missing our recruiting requirements, having to even talk about forcing women in a compulsory way to register for the selective service if we were treating the men and women who volunteer for military service a little bit better than we are now. And uh, I am grateful that the chairman has held discussions about the extent to which these new paradigms and ideologies are impacting our service members, but we cannot possibly have a discussion about recruiting and the values of the military while people who feel like they might have a conservative perspective or a pro-Trump perspective 
are in fact targeted by military leaders who are rejecting the civility that you expressly called for in your letter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.